Hey folks, this is Justin at Metcalf Mills. Wanted to share something with you on deer control. In the past, I've had some deer problems. They get in and bother uh, corn, beans, just stuff like that. A lot of times they'll eat the blooms right off your beans. Watermelons, cantaloupe, squash, winter squash, they just come through and tear it up. They like those melons and cantaloupes and squash. When they get bigger, they'll pile them and just destroy them. So. We got a secret weapon here that's made by a good friend of mine, and we're gonna try that on and see just exactly how it works out here. All right, folks, this is the bone sauce, and like I said, it's made by a buddy of mine, uh, Billy, over at Perma Pasture Farm. If you don't know him, you need to check them out. They're awesome people. This is this has been tested in an orchard type setting where deers are bothering your fruit trees. It's never been tested in the capacity of a farmed field. So we're anxious to see how this works. I know most of the time deers are hard to control. So we're hoping this, this helps preserve and save what we're working here to try to do. I mean, the deers have plenty to eat elsewhere, so. We're hoping they'll lay off a little bit. So we'll try this out, see how it works. I'll let you know in a future video how it works and where you can get it. So what we're gonna do, folks, is take a paintbrush and just paint this post with the bone sauce. The first time I heard about bone sauce, I thought Billy was inviting me over for a barbecue, but then I found out, no, that's not what it is. So we're excited to try this stuff out and see how it works. Ooey gooey. I tell you what, folks, if this was put anywhere near my kitchen, I wouldn't be eating there. So I'm excited to see how this works. Looks like their game trail over there where they cross down and come into the field here. I've saw them go out this way. So I believe this would be a good spot to put another one. You can't blame a deer. This would be my favorite place to cross the creek, too. Down at the back corner of this field, potentially a good place for deers to come in. So we're gonna put another stake here and soak it in bone sauce. I'm glad to live in this area that I do, you know, my Family's been around here almost 200 years. They settled this land here where, where I live. And uh, I, I don't ever remember hearing anybody ever talk about having deer problems. I don't know 200 years ago what the status was of the wildlife, but first time we started having deer problems in our garden, was about three years ago and up until then we had never had a deer problem like i said folks this has been tried in orchard settings where you have fruit trees but not been tried in a farmed field before so thinking about my family we've Apples have always been a big thing here in the mountains. Tell you something about my great grandpa. He raised his family, which is my grandpa's family, the very head of Indian Creek in Yancey County. And in the fall of the year, they would load up a wagon load of apples, go up to the top of the mountain, and his oldest son, which was my grandpa's brother, 
Robert would go with him and reason being he would have to use oxen to help pull that heavy wagon up to the top of the mountain at the Maney Gap where they would cross to go down into Buncombe County. And when they got to the top, Robert would unhook the oxen and lead them back down to the house and he would go on off the backside with his horses or mules hitched to his wagon load of apples. After he would go through the Maney Gap down the backside with his wagon load of apples, he'd go on down through Barnardsville, North Carolina, and on towards Asheville. And he would get, and he left before daylight with this wagon load of apples and his horses, and he would get to Woodfin, which is about, well, nowadays, about less than five minutes from downtown Asheville. He would get to Woodfin before dark that evening, and he would camp there, sleep underneath his wagon, and the next morning he would go on into Asheville at the place they called my family I always called it the lot but it was like the farmer's market it's where all the farmers would bring their stuff in it was on lexton avenue right down below the civic center in that big lot there and that's where everybody set up to sell their wares they'd haul haul them in from the out in the mountains in the country and that's where they'd sell but he'd go on into Asheville the next morning and he'd stay there in town until he sold out and then he'd get back on his wagon and head back towards home and that too even without being loaded was a overnight trip he would get into right at the carter swain house which is a very historic old house in north buncombe county they had like a camping ground there for people traveling and that's where he would camp there's a big spring over there in a spring house and that's where they would camp he'd get water at the spring house and then he'd go on home the next day stop by the angle store there at the mouth of indian creek a big store there and that's where he would get what they needed and then he would go on back home so it was a, now you can get to Asheville in 25, 30 minutes, but then it was over a day's trip to get there. You know, we don't choose where we're born or who we're born to, but I sure am thankful that I was born right here where I live and was raised here. I wasn't born right here. I was born at the hospital, but I was raised here. And if you look, Right back here, you can see Chestnut Mountain. Our property goes to the top of that mountain. Uh, in the olden days, after my family settled here, I've got copies of w wills and deeds. And it was, some of them say, you know, the wills, they had big families, 10, 12, sometimes more children in a family. And some of the wills said that they would leave each kid maybe a thousand or two thousand acres, several hundred acres anyway. So after the years, it's it's got less and less because kids inherit more, and uh, it's just it's just a different world now. But and there's very few people around here, original people that live here, that have been here for a long time. And I really find a lot of thankfulness in that because some of the neighbors I have that have came in, it's just, I mean, if you got folks, and that's something else I want to say, if you don't know your neighbors, you need to get over and meet them. Neighbors, I found out, are just like a hidden treasure. They can live there for years, you don't know them, but then you go meet them, and you find treasure in these people. I mean, it's just the way it is. And if you think about it, if it comes right down to it, a neighbor is one of your most valuable assets. 
if it comes right down to it, your neighbor is going to be about as close to you as anybody. Think about it. Talking about Chestnut Mountain, I've got a lot of memories of that mountain. My, my grandpa spent a lot of time up there, and, and me and him too, and he loved to go up on the mountain. And when I was a little boy, just, I mean, not even big enough to walk, mother, she loved to get in the woods and, and hunt ginseng. She loved to get out in the mountains and hunt ginseng. And when I was little, too little to even walk, she would go to the mountain and she would carry me. She'd carry me while she ginseng hunted, you know, and carry water and maybe a snack of some kind. But I growed up in the mountains hunting ginseng with my mother. And it's just, there's a lot of good memories up on Chestnut Mountain. Talking about my mother, we lost her this past February and it felt a little early to me, but I guess, I guess it maybe I, <laughs> it's always gonna feel some way, I guess, when you lose your mother. She left me with a lot of good memories and she shared a lot of good things with me. And I talked about my dad, you know, he shared stories about going to the mill with my grandpa and grinding corn. And that kind of got within me and that's why I do what I do, you know, mill right work. Working on grain mills, that's that's how I got started, listening to my dad tell me stories about it. And it meant a lot to him. He spent time with my grandpa and he really enjoyed it and stories like that it mean a lot they mean a lot to me and my mother she uh my dad was sick most of my life so he couldn't do a whole lot but mother me and her done the most of the garden work and she is why i am the way I am about growing food and putting up food and I learned from her how to can and garden and all that kind of stuff so in my opinion I feel like my parents gave me the best they had because the things they shared with me that makes up my life and that's something that I can share with my daughters and you know I just hope that they have the same feelings that I have about this stuff but they've got their own lives and they can live them you know however they want to and I'll support them but I tell you what I sure have been blessed with what my parents have shared with me we'll see how this bone sauce works I'm looking forward to seeing results hopefully and uh We'll keep everybody in the loop as to how it goes and let you know how the deers react to this. It's really going to be a big, important thing if it does deter the deers because they're getting, every year seems like they get a little worse and a little worse bothering your, bothering your crops and your gardens and all that. So we'll see. In the meantime, uh, if you will, like and subscribe. And I, like I say, I've got some good videos coming out I want to share with you. So look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you for watching.